my name is Miranda Ashleen, and I would like to start by asking you all to consider whether or not you are an artist. And this is not a rhetorical question. I actually want you to raise your hand if you're an artist. I knew that would happen because we're in Somerville, and apart from Manhattan, we have the most artists in the USA per capita. So I ask this question because art is actually a rather complicated word. You could be talking about the arts, as in music, dance, theater. You can be talking about specifically visual art, so drawing, painting, or sculpting. Or you can be talking about art as in something that someone does particularly well. The art of cooking, the art of driving, the art of speaking. And it's this last definition that makes art such an intimidating word. Because we associate art with masters and experts. And most of us, at least most of the people I know, don't really think of themselves as a master or an expert even if they are. Now, I was very creative when I was a kid, like all children are. But in about late elementary school, I fell prey to children's categorizations. And because I did well on tests, I was a nerdy kid. And because I could not draw realistically with a pencil, I was not an artist. And this stuck with me for a really long time. Now, I solidified my role as a nerdy kid when I skipped high school, and I went to college at the age of 14. And when I did this, everyone asked, are you going to be a doctor or a lawyer? Because, you know, that's what smart people are supposed to do. But not being particularly interested in bodily fluids or arguing, I decided these professions were not for me. And instead, when I took my first art class in college, I became an art major. And I spent the next four years doing nothing but painting and drawing and throwing pottery. But that whole time, I still would not call myself an artist. I was just an art major. I was just studying it. You know, leave the artists to the professionals. It wasn't until my final year when I was standing in a gallery full of my own artwork, eight large abstract oil paintings hung all over the room, that I realized it may still make me uncomfortable, I may still want to kind of whisper it instead of actually saying it, but I am an artist. So I moved up to Boston with that realization, and I started teaching at the Museum of Fine Arts. And when I was teaching, I noticed this common phenomenon that a lot of teachers have seen, which is that if you walk into a room of five-year-olds and you ask who's an artist, they'll all raise their hand and they'll run to the, get something they made and shove it in your face, and if you let them, they'll tell you a whole story about it. For example, I could just scrap the rest of this talk and tell you a 10-minute adventure about Mr. Froggy, Feathers, swim on, and nur the bunny. Yes, that is a bunny. I know it looks like a kitty. I asked her like five times. It's a, it's a bunny. But by the time kids reach double digits, let alone high school or adulthood, this unbridled joy in making things and pride in what they've made is all but disappeared. And so while I was teaching at the Museum of Fine Arts, I was also working on my Master's of Education at Lesley University. And I had to do a master's thesis. And I was going to make a creativity training program for doctors, businessmen, and teachers to help reintroduce creativity into those professions. And I was so excited about it, I told it to everyone I could think of. But I wasn't getting the reaction that I'd hoped for. And it took me a while to figure out why. Because that most of my friends were thinking, Miranda, who's going to listen to a 19-year-old grad student tell them how to use creativity to do their job better? And when I started thinking that, I scrapped the whole project. Because I was so discouraged that even after six years of higher education and tens of thousands of dollars, mostly in loans, I wasn't ready. But then I realized that it's that emotion, that discouragement that I wanted to do my project on. And so I wrote my book. And I actually came up with the title while I was taking a bath one night because, you know, that's where all great ideas come from. And it was going to be, don't make art, just make something. And as soon as I came up with that title, I was writing every single night. I went home and I spilled out. I was writing in the class. I was writing on the tee every moment of every day. And that excitement lasted for a while. But as all excitement does, it started to ebb away. And I was left with this thought. You know, most people who write books have years of experience or have done decades of research. And here I was, not even alive for two decades, claiming that I could be one of them. And so I stopped writing. But I still had a master's thesis to finish, so I couldn't stop altogether. And I continued to read and research. I read a lot about creativity and art and making community and education. And I started to notice this common message, which is that a lot of people were writing 
It's never too late. You know, dive in, you still have it. But it didn't help me. And I realized that's because there's a missing message, that no one, no one is saying that no matter how old you are, it is never too early. And as someone who's done most things in my life too early, I felt like this was a message that really needed to be shared. And so I started writing again, not from the glorified halls of experience sitting atop my pile of published research papers, but from down in the trenches, full of doubt and insecurity. And it was that decision that led me to start grad school at 17 and write a book at 19 and be standing here at 20 sharing my ideas with all of you wonderful people who have been here all day long. And those ideas are quickly becoming the core of my life's work, which is this belief that if you always try and make capital A, put on a pedestal, museum-worthy art, you'll never make anything at all. But if you just make something, that turns into something else, which turns into something else, and something else, and something else, and something else, and that progression is how you actually end up making art. So though I know not everyone here is an artist, I do firmly believe that everyone, everyone is creative. And to help spread this message, I started a project called What Do You Make? Where I ask people, just like all of you, to send me pictures of things that they've made. And one of the first ones I got was from my friend Alex, I had talked to for about a year or two. And she sent me this. She sent me a picture of a hand embroidered pillow with Van Gogh's Starry Night on it. Oh, who does that? But every person you meet has something like this, including Lauren, who made this 17th century handcrafted apparel. But not everything is a craft or an art, don't worry. My academic sister, she sent me her history thesis, which I can tell you after the hours we spent on the phone together, took a lot of creativity. And then my friend who actually did decide to become a doctor despite the bodily fluids, saw that and she sent me her study guides for med school because she spent every hour of every day making these. My cousin sent me a picture of her daughter and it's one of my favorite pictures because not only did her daughter make the jewelry, but my cousin, she made her daughter. And so I got pictures from all over the world, from a teacher out in, Cal in uh, Chicago who made these pinch pots with her students, from a woman up in Michigan who makes random little snacks that I never would have thought of but looked really good. And then a woodcarver out in Wisconsin who sent me this, this is I think like six feet long, hanging up there. My aunt sent me a picture of her garden out in Arizona and her self-proclaimed non-artist of a neighbor makes fantastic garbage sculptures that he just puts in his backyard because, you know, why not? And even just today, we've heard from people who make films, people who can hoist themselves up in the air and spin around in ways that I didn't even know were possible, people who can drum the, so loud that it just makes it feel like it's your heartbeat. And I bet there are even more stories hidden in every single one of you. And as you start to hear these stories, you realize that unless you're standing in an untouched forest in the middle of nowhere, if any of those even exist anymore, everything around you was made by someone, and everyone around you has made something. They're just waiting for you to ask what it is. And so my challenge for you as you get ready to leave this day full of inspiration and movement and loud ideas is to go up to a stranger and introduce yourself, and instead of asking, you know, where are you from, what do you do, ask them what they make. And sometimes the information comes flooding out at you and you can't get them to stop. And sometimes it's like pulling teeth to get people to admit they make anything at all. But I promise you that if you stick with it, you will find something wonderful and unexpected tucked inside every person you meet. And as you find these things, please share them with me. Tweet them, Facebook them, Instagram them, all the other social media stuff I don't know, and hashtag them with what I make so that we can start to make a visual representation of all of the incredible things tucked inside the people around us so that whenever someone's feeling like it's too late or it's too early, you can help me remind them that the most important thing of all is to just make something. Thank you.